a hundred videos on YouTube, all I can say is you poor things. But honestly, you've only got yourselves to blame, guys, because you encouraged me. So I thought to celebrate and to punish you guys a little bit more, I'd finally finish the My Riding Life story because I kind of cut it a little bit short. So today I'm going to fill in the gaps of the last five years. We're going to talk about my gap year, going off to uni and trying to juggle the horses. Obviously there's going to be a lot of new horses introduced, we're going to talk about social media and how I've tried to kind of make a business out of it, we'll talk about competing, about my sponsors, basically everything interesting that's happened to me in the past five years. So to follow this crazy journey that we call life, we need to go back from this day where I graduated university to where we left off in the last video, which I believe was around the tail end of 2015. Just to paint you a little picture, I had had D for a few months here. I also had Lara and probably some other youngsters, but not gonna lie guys, I can't really remember. Now those shocking facts bring me on to my next point, which is to say that doing this last video, I got incredibly stressed. I had to re-record a lot of the voiceovers and I didn't particularly enjoy it. So for that reason, this video is going to be a lot more chillax. I'm gonna pop you in a nice little picture. There we go, that's what I currently look like now. Don't laugh, just embrace it. It's gonna be a casual video, we're gonna be all nice and chatty and just have fun. Grab yourselves a drink, possibly a Pims if you are of age, sit back and let's talk about when I went traveling at the start of 2016. So on Boxing Day of 2015, I went off to Asia for a month to do the generic traveling things. I saw some temples, went to some beaches, stayed in some huts, went to a big cave, saw some white sand, took part in a massive Jenga tournament, jumped off some cliffs, ate some weird food, carried this lady's fruit, taught this Vietnamese guy the V signs, and then took some beautiful pictures which will stay with me for life, like these ones. And then I came home. So I got back from traveling and I had Dee, who you can see here, looking a lot younger, and also Lara to ride. I was really lucky because I already knew that I had my place at Liverpool, so I basically had from the end of January to September to do whatever I liked, really. So a lot of my time was spent producing Dee. She had obviously never evented at this stage, so this was the first year that we went out eventing together. We did actually have a little bit of a nasty fall before the start of the season going over a double which left me a tiny bit scarred I won't lie it also left Dee a bit worried going through doubles however we did get through it and we did have quite a successful year we started off and did some 80s which she was fantastic at she actually won three in a row which was fab we then moved her up to 90 I ended up having a really annoying stop cross country still remember how upset I was because it was completely my fault. But after that she was actually really fab and I ended up having such a fun season on her. She was really cracking. We just struggled a little bit with the dressage because she was so keen, but her jumping was always super. I also had Lara in work, so we started eventing. We did quite a few hundreds that year, but then unfortunately she ended up going lame in June.
So that was the time that we decided actually we're going to have a fall from her because obviously I was going off to university and it didn't really seem worth her having all of the box rest because then I wouldn't be around to bring her back into work. So the rest of my gap year was spent working. I worked for an Irish dealer producing some ponies and I also did a bit of freelance riding work and that brings us around to the time of me going off to uni. So I went off to the University of Liverpool to study human geography. Here's the first tip for you guys, don't wear this lanyard they give you, you look like such a loser, no one told me, look at me. Also, no one told me that you need to hold on to loo roll for dear life at uni, people will steal it. So what you're looking at now is one of the reasons I decided to go to Liverpool, look how stunningly beautiful it is. Honestly, I can't sing its praises enough. Looking at these pictures is making me a little bit emotional. So obviously I didn't just pick it for the good looks and the fact it has a nightlife better than Ibiza. It does also have a really good human geography department. So that was a massive selling point. Plus look at these last two pictures of campus. Stunning. I know, it's, I'm, I know, I know I've just said I didn't pick it because it's pretty, but I kind of did. Aesthetics are everything, guys. Lol, jokes, please look into your unis. So the reason I went to uni is because I wanted to step into adulthood. I wanted to educate myself on world affairs and learn, oh my, <laughs> I don't know what that's doing in there. <laughs> Get rid of that. Um, okay, me with a microscope, I guess that's slightly better, although my face does not look like I'm learning. Anyway, uni was the most incredible experience of my life. I met some of the most amazing people that I think I'll ever meet and all of these wonderful people you're looking at now are still in my life and I'm really sorry for posting <laughs> these pictures guys please forgive me I avoided lots of bad ones so these are just pictures of first year you can probably tell because I look like an embryo so full of life little did I know that third year was going to make me cry but anyway uni is amazing and we'll go into it a little bit more but I had so, so much fun and I'm really glad that I did do it. So another thing that really attracted me to University of Liverpool was that they had a very strong equestrian team. So before I went off to uni, I did a little bit of research and I found out that universities have equestrian teams, a bit like they have football and rugby teams, like some of them are super competitive. You can compete at regionals and nationals, but the twist is that you're not riding your own horses. No, 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 that would be far too easy. So you essentially turn up at equestrian centres and you will pick a random horse out of a hat and that will be the horse that you ride in the dressage and then you'll do the same for show jumping, you'll pick a different horse out and that will be the horse you have to show jump and you get less than 10 minutes to warm up, you get to jump four fences before your show jumping round and you basically get marked on how well you can ride this random horse and you compete against the other people that are riding your horse. So four members in a team, you'll each ride different horses and then there's four other, well there's four teams all together and basically four people will ride every horse and then it's how well you ride the horse compared to the other people. It sounds a bit complicated, go and watch the vlog, it is honestly so much fun. It's incredibly stressful, incredibly competitive, especially when you're at Liverpool and they expect quite a lot from their equestrian team because we're national champions a lot. Um, but honestly, if you guys are going to university in the UK, I don't know what it's like abroad, I really recommend trialling for the riding team. It is amazing. So first semester of uni was actually incredible. I had the best time. I was on the riding team, so I was still riding and training and obviously doing a bit of partying. Don't know why I'm showing you this picture. This one here is a much better representation of what I'm like at a party. Straight for the buffet, basically. It's part of my personality. So first semester of uni, I only went home once. This was kind of because I wanted to make some friends. I wanted to get really settled. And luckily for me, mum was completely amazing and she looked after all of the ponies for me. We did have a bit of help at our old yard as well. So yeah, mum covered all of that, which was just incredible. But I was really missing them. And in November, I decided I'd had enough of not being able to talk about horses like all day, every day, because that's all mum and I do. And I started my current Instagram account, which you are looking at right now. You might have paused it to read the caption. 
bit of a long story. I basically lost my old Instagram and when I got to uni, I was like, I need, I need somewhere to talk about horses. So I started my Instagram account and the rest is kind of history. So I partly started it because I wanted to talk about ponies and partly because we had an exciting new delivery. Boom, meet Cosmo. So basically when I went off to uni, mum had what I only believe was a midlife crisis. I mean, obviously I wasn't there, but I think what happened is she missed her favorite child so, so much that she decided to fill that giant gaping void of a hole with ponies. So we ended up importing Cosmo, who was a four turning five year old Connemara from Ireland. And that was also around the time we stumbled across Bear. So many of you might already know that we found Bear on Facebook. We didn't go and see her. Obviously I was in Liverpool and mum was just at home. So we bought Bear unseen. Now, I have spoken a bit about how Bear arrived before. It wasn't anything to do with the lady that we got her from because she'd only been there a week or two. Um, but she was very skinny um, and, yeah, had a few problems. So the first couple of months, we didn't really do anything with her, but that worked well for me because it wasn't until Christmas that I actually went home to ride them. So finally, the Christmas holidays rolled around and I went back to meet these two ponies, which was so exciting. I don't know how I managed to stay at uni, but there was a lot of assignments, so I had to kind of stay there and get those done. But I went back to meet Cosmo and Bear and they were both so, so sweet. Cosmo was kind of ready to crack on and go, so I did some schooling and stuff with him that winter. Bear was still very weak. She'd put on quite a lot of weight, but it was mainly just eating and a tiny bit of schooling. We sort of did a little bit of hacking, um, but we didn't do loads with Bear because she just wasn't strong enough at that time. You can see in these pictures, she looks completely different to how she looks now. She was all weedy and her coat had no shine to it. And she was just generally a bit of a sad pony. As soon as Bear got some food into her and she was feeling a lot better in herself, she turned into a bit of a wild pony, I'm not gonna lie. So we did quite a lot of loose jumping, so I'll pop some pictures in here. She just really enjoyed doing that and it also tied her out, which was fantastic news for me. So we did take it very slowly with Bear. We had to build up a relationship with her because that's just the kind of person that she is. But she really enjoyed doing this loose jumping and it did mean that eventually I could get on her and do a little bit of jumping with her too, which was fab. As you can see, she was mega, mega talented from the word go. Look at that back end. She's insane. So I obviously went back to uni in January. I did all my exams, but because the event season was starting in March, I traveled back a lot more for second semester of uni. So I'd come back, ride Bear, ride Cosmo, and also get D ready for the season ahead. So we started eventing in March. I took D to Swaycliffe, and I remember I felt so underprepared because although I'd been traveling back a little bit, it wasn't nearly as much as I would be riding her if I was at home full time, obviously. Anyway, we went to Swaycliffe and Dee was an angel. She was double clear, had quite a good dressage, not amazing. Because I'd been so out of it and I hadn't done any cross country practice, I got loads of time faults, so we didn't get placed. But it was just me sort of getting used to that and realizing that I perhaps needed to think about things a little bit more and also realizing I wasn't nearly as fit as I would be if I was at home riding all the time. So cross country was a little bit trickier than it normally would be. So it's worth mentioning now for people that are perhaps about to go off to uni and you're worrying about whether you can keep the horses going and go to uni. I won't lie to you guys, it's very tough and there is absolutely no way I could have done it without the support of mum because she kept them ticking over for me. She looked after them day to day and yes, I went back and I did schooling and I tried to fit in lessons, but I couldn't have done it without her. So you do need a support network at home, I think, if you don't want to be commuting to uni from home, like if you want to live away from home. Another thing I will say is that you do have to be prepared to burn the candle at both ends if you want to try and do uni and the horses or I guess and any other hobby that takes up a lot of time. So I kind of figured this out more and more as uni went on because obviously the workload increased a lot and the number of horses I had also increased. Probably shouldn't have planned it like that. So I'll talk about how my kind of schedule worked with uni and the horses throughout this video because it did change a lot throughout my three years at uni. 
But for this event, for example, I remember I had a lecture on the Friday, so I went straight from my lecture to the train station. All of my riding stuff was in Liverpool, so I had to take all of that on the train, because obviously I was on the riding team. So I trained back, mum would pick me up from Milton Keynes, I'd then go home, I'd ride in the dark, we didn't have floodlights, so we'd park the car by the school, and I would ride with using the car as floodlights and then I rode on the Saturday and then I competed on the Sunday. We got up super early, went and competed, drove home, mum would drive me back to the station, I'd hop on the train and then I had a 9am lecture on Monday. So it was so full on and obviously between that I had the other horses to ride and then obviously spend time with my friends and family back at home. So it was pretty crazy. Oh, I probably had some assignments to do as well, but whether I did those or not is another question. So I guess what I'm trying to say is it is perfectly doable, but you do need that support network at home and you also need to have the love and the passion and the motivation for it because there were times where I was so tired. I'm not trying to promote this, guys, but the amount of Pro Plus I got through at uni was ridiculous because I just couldn't stay awake. I'd be in the library till five, six, seven in the morning, go to lectures, go home, ride, come back. It was quite crazy, but I absolutely loved it. You do definitely need to have a bit of a screw loose though to try and do horses in uni. Remember also you've got your non-horsey friends at uni like trying to get you to, that was such a bad transition. Just watching the video there, that was awful. Um, but obviously yeah, you've got your uni friends wanting you to go to parties, wanting to arrange fun things to do. And sometimes, there could be a little bit of friction because other people that don't have horses don't understand why you're doing all of this extra work to go and ride in a field but you just can't explain it to them there's something about riding in a muddy field which us horsey people just love so that's kind of what i did for first year i only had d eventing at that time i kept bear and cosmo ticking over lara was obviously pregnant but Dee was so, so good. She was really easy to pick up and put down. So I did actually end up making it to quite a few events in that second semester. So that was really, really fun. I was so lucky. Also, the riding teams were going amazingly. Our team qualified for regionals, which we then won, which meant we went off to nationals. But we'll talk a little bit about that in just a second because I want to tell you about the arrival of Jam! So what you're looking at now are the pictures and videos that we saw of Jam before we bought her. So you might not know, but we imported her over from Ireland as a three-year-old. Um, we did this about April, May time, I'm not 100% sure. But the reason we did was because we were getting very keen to have our first foal. Obviously Lara wasn't due for a little while, but we were so excited and we decided we actually wanted to have another foal for the following year, but we didn't have a mare to put in foal that wasn't doing work. So that is kind of why we ended up buying Jam because she was a really nice, big, strong three-year-old and we really wanted a Connie Cross foal. So that's why we got Jammy over. Anyway, let's skip forward to the end of first year. So sad. Here I am with some of my besties going to the geography ball. Anyone at uni or who went to uni will know the end of year balls were so much fun. Also, how cute is my friend curling my hair? She's amazing. Shout out to you, Lucy. As I mentioned a little while ago, the riding team also qualified for nationals, which was probably the most fun. It was one of the best experiences at uni. So the video you're watching now is actually me riding in the final dressage rounds. So if you've watched the uni competition vlog, you'll know that it kind of goes in rounds. So when you get to the champs, um, you'll go through several rounds and people get knocked out. And this is the final one. I made it through to the last round in dressage and I actually ended up winning. So you guys are listening to the national dressage champion of 2016. Is that the right year? No, 2017, I have no idea. But this was the lovely mare that I ended up drawing out of a hat. You get less time to warm up at championships, so I think I'd been on her for five minutes before I went in to do my test, which I had to learn the day of or the day before because there were so many different tests in my head. But it was so much fun, I really enjoyed riding her. She was quite sassy and the other person who got through to the final round just didn't get on with her. She was a bit sort of, she was a typical mare and 
I don't know if they were not used to riding mares, but obviously I ride them a lot. So I kind of figured out how she wanted to be ridden quite quickly. Um, but she was quite naughty with the other person, so that worked out in my favour. I had to put these clips in. I'm so sorry, they're terrible quality. I've for some reason deleted the video, and so I had to get this off of Facebook, hence why it's just a little blur. But it was such a happy memory, so I couldn't not include it. Also, something I will say is when you get to champs of these competitions, you get such nice horses. So the horses kind of get nicer and nicer, like through first rounds, then regionals, then champs. Um, but remember, I was in the second team this year, so there's also the first team and they go a higher level. Um, we'll talk about that later in the vlog. But the first team gets horses that can jump up to like 120 for the final round of jumping. Anyway, moving on. So the team actually ended up winning as well, which was just amazing. We were national champions for a third year in a row. I say we, Liverpool was. So you can see here, absolutely chuffed. Sadly, I didn't win the show jumping. I, uh, I had a bit of a flop in the show jumping. I had a bit of a difficult horse. It was huge. I remember being so terrified because it was so big, the horse I mean, and I'd never really jumped anything that big. But it was still so much fun. And yeah, the team won, which was incredible. So, so happy. So after that, I whizzed all the way home to spend a fun-filled summer with my ponies. Here's Jammy, that's her on the left, a little bit more grown up. I also started doing more with Bear at that point and she was turning into an absolute firecracker as you can see here. This is her first ever time going cross-country schooling. We took her to Astony Walls and I think this is where I completely fell in love with her and thought actually, you are an incredibly talented pony. She certainly wasn't the easiest, but we just knew that she was going to be super, super talented. Eventually, after a lot of schooling and going to loads of different venues, we got Bear out to her first ever event. How adorable does she look? And although the first few were a bit ropey, we had horrendous dressage results, would you believe it? You wouldn't now, seeing as Bear is amazing on the flat now but she was just so spooky back then that she really struggled in the dressage, but her jumping always made up for it. And deep down, I knew she was gonna be absolutely mega because the dressage judges absolutely loved her. Their comments were still so, so supportive, but she was leaping out of the arena, so they obviously couldn't give her amazing marks. But these did quickly improve and we actually had quite a few successful runs and affiliated for the rest of that year. I also had D to event that year, obviously I'd done a few whilst I'd been at uni, but we got to do much more in the summer, she was an absolute superstar, we also stepped her up to 100 this year, where she did a fabulous clear cross country, here she is, our first 100 at Smith's Lawn, doesn't she look posh? The super exciting thing that was happening that summer was of course Lara having her first ever foal, she went to a very good friend of ours to have her foal because she's much more experienced than us and she had the right setup but I could log into the foal cam and I did so more than I'm proud to admit. I was on it all the time, all throughout the night I wanted to check her. And then lo and behold, Ari was born on the 11th of August. It was such a magical day. He was born in the middle of the night, so we crept down and went to see him. He was such a handsome and cute little devil. We just could not take our eyes off him. He was so, so sweet. And we spent pretty much that whole first day just petting him, cuddling him, as you can see here. He was so tiny, he was like a little Shetland bowl. Here he is out in the field for the first time. Don't think he liked the flies, he still hates the flies actually, but he was such a little cutie. It certainly is a very magical and special experience breeding your own foal, so if anyone is ever lucky enough to be in a position to do so, I would really recommend it because it is such a blessing to have these gorgeous little things walked into your life and we were so happy with having Ari come out. Isn't he gorgeous? 
So the rest of that summer basically consisted of cuddling Ari and also eventing and producing ponies. What more can a girl ask for? So Dee continued eventing, she was being an absolute superstar, she got quite a few regional final places and we went to a couple of those but we weren't terribly successful. Story of my life, am I right? Cosmo was also being a really good boy, I was just steadily producing him, he was still quite young and weak but I was teaching him to do a little bit of jumping and he also went on a few bloodhound exercises and he really really enjoyed that so that's when we kind of decided he would be fabulous in a hunting home. And then the star of the show was of course Bear, she took to eventing so so well, she was really starting to enjoy her jumping and her dressage was coming together beautifully and she did her last event of the season at Swaycliffe and she actually ended up winning it with a fab sub 30 dressage score so I was so chuffed with that. I then head back to uni for second year, Pamela Anderson, eat your heart out boo because look at me rocking the Baywatch vibe. You might be wondering why I'm dressed like this, it was for an AU night, so an athletic union night and these were so much fun, you used to dress up in fancy dress and it was just incredible. This night I also found out that I'd been selected to go in the first team for riding so I was very very happy this night, I'm not gonna lie guys. The first few weeks of second year were especially hectic because I still had regional finals to do with D, so I was travelling back every opportunity I had to ride and obviously to school her up to try and qualify for badminton. This was at Dauncey, this was the last chance I had and I was so, so desperate to get there and I had the most annoying pole show jumping which meant I didn't qualify. Can't tell you how sad I was and the drive back to uni was spent mostly with me crying, but my friends were so amazing. I literally got back to the house really upset and they cheered me up so much and we went a night out and we acted like I had qualified, so that was nice. And then second year hit me like a ton of bricks. This was my face permanently during second year. In fact, it was either this or crying. And those were kind of my two faces. Not gonna lie guys, it's a very big step. First year is all rainbows and sunshine and fun and games and then you get into second year, suddenly it counts, suddenly you're in the library at 3am crying because you cannot get your assignment in for the right time and it's stressful. It, it really is, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Anyway, we still had an amazing time, we still found time to party and I still partied it up with Philip Schofield's <clears throat> cut out. First semester of second year wasn't all doom and gloom. Jam scanned in fold to the same stallion that we put Lara to, so that was super exciting. The riding team was also doing very well and I had slotted into the first team quite nicely and actually had a few wins. And then it was time to go home for Christmas, which is always fun, except you're revising for January exams. But Ari was growing up nicely, he's so adorable. Cosmo was sold to a hunting home, so that was really good. And Bear was just being her fantastic, beautiful self, as you can see here. She really had a ping on her. And we also randomly bought this pony called Ida, so she was sweet. My Christmas break was actually extended a little bit because there were university strikes going on. But eventually I went back to uni, we did some more competing for the riding team. We also went on a field trip to Belfast, which was so much fun and definitely one of the perks of doing geography, guys. I went on some fab field trips, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. So as per usual, I was doing a lot of traveling back and forth to try and get the horses ready for the event season. And this was going to be an exciting one because we decided we were going to join Bear to BE. And I think we decided this on this day that we went cross country schooling because, oh my goodness, how could we not join her to BE? Look how incredible she was. So Bear went to her first ever BE in April 2018 and she did not disappoint. She got a sub 30 dressage and then went double clear and came second. And she actually came second behind a five star rider so we can't really complain about that. Little fun fact about Bear for you all, she's never not had a sub 30 dressage at BE. 
which is just incredible. I feel like I will never have a horse or pony that is as consistent as Bear ever again. Here she is, her first ever BE rosette. Dee Dee was also having a fab season in 2018. She went double clear at every event and this is her at Horse Heath, the same weekend we took Bear to Solihull and she also came second. So whilst I was having an amazing eventing season in 2018, sadly the riding team very narrowly missed out on qualifying for nationals. So sad, we came second at regionals but you have to win it in order to get to nationals. So sadly we didn't get to go, but the season in the first team really really helped my riding and I think that showed in my eventing results that year and from that year to be fair because my dressage marks really really dropped after being involved in the riding team because obviously it's all about how you ride so you become very very conscious of what you do in a dressage test. <laughs> Oh, that's obviously not how you want to ride a dress size chest, but I couldn't not put that video in because it makes me laugh so much. Anyway, continuing on, we weaned Lara and Ari. We actually left them a little bit longer than planned because Ari was quite weak during the winter. So we let them have the winter together and then weaned them the following spring. And then I got back on Lara, which was really fun. So I got her back into work. That was obviously a slow process. So by this time, second year was drawing to a close. I submitted my third year modules and then it was party time again. Another jog ball, another picture of Meg in a dress. Sorry guys, but I don't get to put these in my vlogs normally. So enjoy all of these extra bougie pictures because normally you don't see me dressed up. So celebrated with my amazing friends, did my exams, got decent results, happy days onto the summer. So the summer of 2018 was amazing. The UK was having a heat wave. England nearly won the World Cup. It was the best series of Love Island yet. Also, we moved house from Oxfordshire to Worcestershire and Jan was expecting her baby, but those really aren't big deals. I'm only messing. Don't come at me. It was a joke, all right? It was a joke. Anyway, here is the beautiful Winnie on the day she was born. How cute is she? And Jan was such a good mummy, bearing in mind she was still young and she'd been over from Ireland less than a year. So she was so, so sweet and really good with Winnie. So Winnie's full name is Rivendell Arwen. She's obviously half brother to Ari because they share the same sire. And she's just adorable. We were so, so chuffed with her and also really, really pleased to have a filly. Don't tell Ari, but we really wanted him to be a girl. So we were chuffed that Winnie came out as she did. So the rest of that summer was honestly like something out of a movie. I did so much eventing. I had Dee, Lara and Bear all out eventing. So that was super fun. There was a whole lot of foal cuddling, as you can see. Yeah, I kind of spent all my time cuddling Winnie, not gonna lie, but that's more than okay because she was so cute. Then there was probably a little bit more eventing, a bit more competing. Oh, did I mention foal cuddling? Did a bit more of that as well. Went on holiday, came back, probably did some more eventing and then foal cuddling. And then it got around to the time of doing my regional finals. So the same as what I've been talking about this entire video, the regional finals are to qualify you for Babington Grassroots. I had these with D and with Bear, but before we get into that, I can't not show you these two hilarious pictures that we got of Bear in the summer of 2018. She is just crazy. So as I've said throughout this video, D was having an amazing season in 2018. So much so that we had three regional final spaces clocked up. So the first one I went to Hom House and annoyingly I was so nervous I went wrong in the dressage and kind of scuppered my chances. The second one we went to Western Park, Dee was doing fabulously, she had a 27 dressage, double clear, but we just got a few time penalties cross country which meant we didn't qualify. Finally we went to Broadway and I think the pressure got to us both and deeper in a very spontaneous canter transition in the dressage. This would have been okay, we could have still qualified, but again, we got a couple of time penalties, which meant we were one place off of qualifying. To say I was sad was an understatement because D was kind of the one I was always hoping to get to Badminton, and yeah, it didn't come off for us. 
However, it wasn't all doom and gloom because Bear had one lonely regional final place that she had built up during her first ever season of BE. Now, I'm not gonna lie, we really weren't expecting much. Bear was so inexperienced, she was just a small pony, and Western Park is such a competitive event, and the regional finals are so hard to qualify for that honestly, I thought it was never going to happen. Lo and behold, Bear completely pulled it out of the bag, like next level. She had a sub 30 double clear inside the time and she only went and won the regional final, meaning we were qualified for badminton for the first ever time. I honestly can't put into words how elated I was that day and Bear will always hold a very, very special place in my heart because she was such an underdog at the start, we really didn't think she was ever going to come to anything. And then she went and qualified for badminton against all of these amazing flashy horses. And it was just such a heartwarming feeling. Don't wanna get emotional with you guys, but it was incredible. Anyway, I know what you're probably thinking. Meg, aren't you forgetting about university? And isn't it your most important year? And yes, Yes, you're right, I had forgotten and it was my most important year. I was meant to be doing my dissertation this summer or at least starting it, but I wasn't really doing much of that. I was kind of living my best life, if I'm being completely honest with you. And that did mean that when I went back to uni in September, I had a bit of a shock. But apparently not enough of a shock because during September I kept coming home to ride the ponies that was actually when I qualified for badminton so that was completely worth it and I also decided to trot off to the Royal Welsh Sales to go and buy a new pony in October. Why on earth not hey? What's 50 grand down the drain in university debt? Enter Brinny to our lives and if you look at my face closely you can see the despair because my dissertation is due in a matter of months and I'm at the Welsh sales buying ponies. Just let that sink in guys, what is wrong with me? Anyway, Brinny was an amazing purchase because she is half sister to Bear. Her two mums are also very closely related so it's kind of more than half sister really and she is completely gorgeous. She's now two, we still have her. I'm hoping to break her in one day and maybe she'll follow in Bear's footsteps, who knows? I will say now, she was worth all of the stress of that weekend and me going back to uni, having done no work. However, I did then journey up to Liverpool and absolutely knuckle down and work my bottom up. Oh, hang on. No. Oh, oh for goodness sake, no. Hang on, guys, sorry. Uh, hi, Fern, could you please give a shout out to my amazing friend Lucy as we're driving back to uni after celebrating her 21st this weekend from Alice, Layla, Meg and Liv. Hello, ladies. Oh, no, not that either. Oh, cute, but still no. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we may have found a little bit of time to party at the start of the semester, but then it was very stressful, guys. I cannot highlight how difficult third year of university is. And it wasn't just me that found it like this, and it wasn't just my course. All of my friends, everyone I knew that was in third year, was really finding it very tricky. The workload seriously steps up. It suddenly becomes incredibly real that you've invested a lot of time and a lot of money into something that you need to make come off. You need to try and get decent marks so that you have a good degree at the end of the day. So I won't lie, there were a lot of breakdowns in third year. I probably cried every day for about two months when I was trying to get my dissertation done. And on top of that, I had loads of other assignments and I'd also be made captain of the riding team. So I was trying to organize things for that. And we had to book and organize a trip to Canada for the following year because that was part of a module. So it was hectic and I'm not trying to discourage anyone from going to university. I think if you want to go, you definitely should. I would 100% recommend it because I loved it. But guys, third year's gonna kill you, okay? I was in the library into early hours of the morning on a regular basis, like my days were about 18 hours long. It was ridiculous. Anyway, I got my dissertation done and we celebrated for a night because then there was an assignment due again the next day. Uni's really fun.
So whilst we're talking about stress, let's quickly go into captaining the riding team. So I did it with one of my best buddies, M. so that was really nice. We did manage to share the workload a little bit, but it was quite a lot on our plate because we had to organise all of the training, we had to pick all the teams, we had to organise the competitions, then pick the people that were going to the competitions. So there was quite a lot to it, but I kind of thought it would look really good on my CV. Plus, after being on the teams for two years and also remembering how desperate I was to get on the teams before I even came to uni, it felt like a really big step and it was something I really did want to do. I'm conscious of this vlog getting quite long now, so I'm going to go through this quickly, but amazingly we did manage to get to regionals and then we won regionals and got to nationals. So if you want to go and watch that vlog, you can do because I was vlogging by then and it's on my YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the description below. All that's left to say is that I really urge anyone at uni to get involved with a club, it doesn't have to be a riding one, literally any club. I met so many lovely people and we had some of the craziest experiences. Maybe this is another vlog to talk about what it was like being on the riding teams because it was hilarious but also so competitive. We would spend the whole day laughing and also taking things so, so seriously. So it was just amazing. On our way back from training, we get stuck in the Liverpool parade. So, just hanging out the car. Here I go. <laughs> Let's go to Liverpool! We need this kind of support. Yeah, this is for nationals. <laughs> Okay, I'm afraid we're going to jump back in time really quickly, guys, to the Christmas holidays. So this is before my dissertation was handed in, but I was desperate to get a sponsor or some kind of support for my upcoming journey to badminton, as it were. So during the Christmas holidays, you'll probably know this about me, I sent out a bunch of emails to all of the brands that I used, know and trusted at the time. And amazingly, both Pure and Shires got back to me and offered me brand ambassador roles so that was kind of how I got the ball rolling to start with since then I've been really lucky that other brands have approached me so I've now got horse quest I've got Concord bedding and I've got Gallop and glory so I know I am incredibly lucky to have these sponsors and they really do mean the world to me but rest assured it started by me doing a lot of grafting and a lot of work to try and secure these deals and persuade people to support me. So obviously things were a little bit more stressful at uni for another reason and that was the fact that I was meant to be going to badminton for the first ever time in my life in May with a very green pony and between that I also had to go to Canada just a few weeks before and also you know try and finish my degree. So I was trying to do as much travelling back and forth to get bear ready and also I was still hoping to compete D and Lara the following year so I was trying to keep three horses eventing fit whilst also studying in Liverpool. So it was tough. It was very tough. But if this video has taught us one thing about what I do when times get tough, we all know that I buy another pony. Introducing Aoife, some of you guys should remember her because she is on my channel. She was such a little sweetheart. We actually ended up part exchanging her for the Pony Ida, which I showed you what seems like a lifetime ago, the little coloured cob, do you remember? Anyway, you should all know the story of Aoife. We bought her, I produced her a bit, I did a bit of eventing with her, and then we sold her onto a lovely home and she is doing a fantastic job in the show jumping world now. So shortly after we bought Aoife, it was time for me to go off to Canada with uni and with two of my absolute best mates in the whole wide world. Apologies girls, there's some bad pictures in here, but don't worry, people are going to be looking at me, not you, okay? So this was and will remain one of the most amazing experiences in my entire life. Canada is incredible, we went to Montreal, I know it's meant to be like Montreal, but I'm not French, so leave me alone. And then we went to Toronto to do field work. We were there for just under three weeks, I believe. Honestly felt so blessed to have that time with two of my best friends in the world. And we just absolutely lived at large, guys. Cannot stress enough how much fun it was. And everyone should do geography because you get to go on fun field trips, especially if you go to Liverpool. Also, I think Manchester's ones are really good as well. Anyway, I digress. So then it was time to come home. It went so quickly. But I was a little bit stressed whilst I was out there, shock, that's kind of the theme of this vlog isn't it, 
because I only had two weeks once I got home from Canada before badminton. So, a little bit stressful. But in that two weeks, it wasn't like I could just go home and do loads of riding because obviously there was a lot of uni work to be done. So again, more juggling. But lo and behold, I do make it to badminton. It was a stressful lead up, I'm not gonna lie. There is a vlog on my YouTube which you can watch, but it's a very old one, so I don't think I go into any exciting details. Anyway, we made it. Mum and I had beautiful candlelit meals, as you can see here. I walked the course, lol. I didn't need to walk this far, did I? As you all probably know. Bear was fabulous in the dresser. She got a 27, what an absolute star. She was top 10 out of over 100 competitors. We had a really annoying poll in the show jumping because Bear and I both got a little bit stressed before that. And obviously cross country was going swimmingly until this happened. But do you know what guys, on reflection, I still had such an amazing time. I really, really enjoyed myself and the atmosphere was second to none and it's really given me a hunger to get back again. The thing that most upset me about badminton was honestly the fact that it finished on the Wednesday and when you qualify for grassroots, you're allowed to stay there for the whole week and enjoy yourself. But because of university, I literally had to go home that Wednesday and then drive to Liverpool that same evening because I had a presentation at 9am the next day. So that really was quite stressful and I remember being so upset the next day. It hadn't even sunk in that I had fallen off. I was just completely emotional and I had to stand up and do a presentation which counted towards my overall mark for my degree. And I don't really know how I got through it. But I did have some good news at badminton and that was that I got a first in my dissertation so that was amazing and it really did spur me on to finish the rest of uni. Finishing uni was easier said than done and I know I've told you how many mental breakdowns I've had, how many times I cried, but guys this was next level. You've already seen this picture but believe it or not I didn't actually take that many pictures of me crying so you're gonna have to deal with it. Although I could cry right now because it's nearly 2am and I feel like I'm back at uni doing work. Moving on, this final week took every ounce of my will to live. But somehow I did make it through. I got that last assignment done. And in true Liverpool style, we went and got our hair put into rollers and we went and partied it up that night. You guessed it guys, we had another jog ball. So these were always amazing and we always had such a good time, but not gonna lie, this one was somewhat emotional because it felt like such an end of an era. We knew we were never gonna have another one again. And we'd had such a lot of stress building up for what felt like an eternity, but I guess it was just a few months really. And we all kind of let it out this night and it was just amazing. I have such good memories of that night. And the night after, to be fair, because then it was the AU ball. So this is like the massive athletic union ball that all the athletes go to. It was so, so fun. So I got dressed up again. I forgot about my final exams again. Probably shouldn't endorse this, but work hard, kids, go to school. And I had another fabulous night. It was so fun celebrating with all of my teammates. And I also got my university colours, which felt like such an achievement. It was something I'd kind of always thought about, but never thought I'd get them. And yeah, I got awarded university colours for riding, so that was amazing. So I had a couple more weeks of pushing my body to the absolute limits and experimenting with how little sleep I could physically survive on. I was revising like mad, slash spending all of my time on this grade calculator website, desperately trying to work out whether I could fail these exams but still pass uni. Spoiler alert, I couldn't, I needed to pass the exams. Anyway, I went to the exams, they went okay, and I'd made it, I was through uni. And I think you can tell by the bags under my eyes that my body physically could not have done another day of this lifestyle, but that didn't matter. I was done, I was finished, we partied it up so hard that night and it was amazing. It made every ounce of stress the whole three years 
totally worth it. So we celebrated in Liverpool and then it was time to go to the riding national champs after that. So go and watch the vlog if you wanna see how that went. Then I went home and I had an amazing time eventing all of the ponies. I really did feel like a massive weight had been lifted off of my shoulders. I've said it a million times, I loved uni so much, but it was a very stressful experience and I physically could not do it again. I really pushed myself to the max. Eventually graduation day rolled around and I got the news through that I managed to get a first overall at uni. And guys, guess what? I cried. But this time, not because I was so stressed out, but it was because I was incredibly happy that every painful hour I had put into this degree was finally worth it. I never thought that I could get a first at uni. And I don't want to sit here and pretend that I was one of those people that didn't put in loads of work and just happened to get a really good mark. It might look like I was having loads of fun, and of course I was. I was really lucky. I got to do some amazing things. But I also did put in a lot of work. I'm not over exaggerating when I say how many hours I spent in the library. It was honestly days upon days that I spent doing this work. But I wouldn't change any of it because I know I've said this before and I'm actually feeling quite emotional looking at these pictures. The uni was honestly a life changing experience and I know loads of people say that but it's because it's true. I had such a fab time, but also such a bad time in places, like there were some serious low points, but I feel like it's definitely moulded me as a person today, and I really met some amazing people that I know I'm going to be friends with for the rest of my life. So let's raise a glass to Liverpool, the most amazing city on this planet. I'll never forget you, and I'll see you soon, as soon as lockdown is over. So since uni, I obviously came home and I got really stuck into doing the horses. As you guys watching this probably know, I also got really stuck into doing social media. My YouTube really took off and I kind of have started trying to make a business out of horses and YouTube and social media all combined. So that is kind of where my life is at now. I would go on and continue, but it's half past two in the morning and I've been editing this vlog for two and a half weeks now, every single night. So I feel like now is a good stopping point and I don't feel too guilty because you can go through my YouTube and you can see exactly what I've been up to this past year. So a massive thank you for watching guys, I hope this was everything you hoped it was going to be. I know that this has been requested a lot but I was quite nervous about doing it partly because it's so much work. But I hope you've enjoyed it, I have actually enjoyed looking back at the amazing time I had at uni. It really has brought a lot of emotions back for me. Make sure you like and subscribe, please. It really does help me out. And I'm going to close it on this amazing edit that I've come across whilst going through hours of footage for this vlog. I'm really sorry, I don't know who has made this for me, but it's absolutely brilliant. So please enjoy it and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye. So give me, so give me your Take it to Mars, oh I'll stick like glue inside your mind Just watch me breathe